Hey guys, so basically I'm just gonna take you over my thought process because I think it's pretty interesting and why I make YouTube videos and so on. Um, yeah. So I don't, it should be pretty obvious. I just, there's no editing. I mean, there's no script. It's whatever I feel like talking about that day and then I'll make them in batches like I do in my other channel. And the reason I make them in batches is it's just easier to make. Uh, it's simpler. So um, I work a lot. And when you work a lot, the last thing you want to do when you get home from work is to continue to do the same thing you were doing at work. And I do a lot of legal cases now for my clients because they need some legal advice and they're always needing legal advice. I don't think they've ever not needed legal advice. And so I help with lawsuits, I help with trademarks, litigation, patents, immigration, and so on and so forth. So this really interesting issue about the reserve list comes up and I did, when I was much younger, look at it because I think there is, I'm getting actually a message from somebody right now. That's how little I, I'm, going, I'm not even going to edit out this message. There's a Facebook message. I should not be on Facebook because otherwise I will receive messages. Um, yeah, I just enjoyed the game as a player. So even the MTG Finance stuff, that is perfectly just as a hobby. I am not reliant on Magic the Gathering at all for income. In fact, I had a store at one time and we were bleeding money because of Magic. Then I stopped selling Magic and guess what? We actually made money for one month out of 11. Uh, so magic was actually the problem because you had a lot of people stealing magic cards. You had a lot of people who would uh, nickel and dime you and they would, you know, make up prices. Oh, this price. I mean, imagine that I'm a store. If the price is slightly too high, the customer is going to complain, whine, throw, throw a tantrum. If the price is too low, they're going to grab it at that price, right? They're never going to be like, oh, well, you know, the card actually spiked last night and now it's a $10 card instead of $1 here. No, no, they're going to buy for a dollar. And then if you say, oh, it's a $10 card now, they're going to throw a tantrum again. Um, so that's kind of uh, <laughs> my financial experience. Now, if I really wanted to try, could I actually do MTG Finance? Yes, I can. And... Uh, from the speculations. I mean, one thing was when people criticized me in the finance community, uh, they would always end it with, but he was right about so-and-so. He was right about so-and-so. So those dual lands I bought, which I continue to buy, look pretty good right now, right? Even though I didn't make as much money as I could because I wanted to offset potential loss, right? And basically, I, I wanted to offset risk. I, I didn't want to hold on to 50K of cards. I wanted to hold on to 25K of cards. So I sold the 25K for whatever I got once it hit the break-even point. Which again is very silly because that 25K of cards I sold is easily 50K right now. I mean, we're talking about five Mox Diamonds, four Grim Monoliths, Cradles, Galore. I mean, I'm going to throw up a little bit. But that being said, I still have $25,000 and I still have about 20000 in just dual lands, which have been doing pretty well and revised actually. Revise has been doing really well. Before I bought $50,000 of cards, do you think I did my homework? Blank, yes, I did my homework. Right? I did it. And then I explained it. When I bought the cards, I think I posted a video like two days later. Um, I explained it and I told you why I was buying the cards. Even when people were selling, people were fire selling. You know, now Rudy is saying, oh, hey, you know, I was right about the reserve list. Bye -bye. I know he was buying, duh. Like, if everyone is selling and there's only a few big buyers in the market, like, I'm the biggest buyer in the Houston market. I buy more than the stores do in terms of reserve list cards because I love them. You know, Homelands is now valuable. Do you know how many hundreds of copies of Homelands cards I have? Like, Cushion Falls, like... I think I have videos on this channel, but like I've still been accumulating. It's kind of like I want to accumulate a thousand narwhals, but on the the goal of accumulating a thousand narwhals, you suddenly have a thousand barren sands and Kosan Falls and Dingaroo and all these bad homeland cards that are now worth ten dollars or more. 
And I, I can't sell them because I don't know anyone who would pay $10 for a dingaroo or you know, I don't know anyone who would pay even $5 for it. So I just end up keeping them and accumulating more. And I think that's what Rudy has done. That's why he has so many copies of these random cards is because you, I understand the pattern. My, my buy behavior is very similar to Rudy because we buy from the same places. Like, one of the things that he does, which is really interesting, because I do it too. I bought it with the Inuyasha TCG. I bought it with um, Nightmare Before Christmas. He knows what I'm talking about. Because I've seen the, vi the Odin videos. He did it with Buddy Fight. Um, I did it with Dragonborn. Uh, I think he bought Dual Masters, or was that Darium's? Whenever there's a product, right now the product on David Adams is this card game from... DC called Meta X or something like that. I don't really know. I'm, I've been bought, hoarding and buying those right now. I'm sure he is too. You just accumulate. And you don't really sell because why would you sell? You don't need the money. And as my business has grown, as I have been hiring more people, as I realize, wait a second. The amount of money it would take from the amount of time it takes for me to nickel and dime with every single um, customer or for every customer to nickel and dime me for every customer to say, I don't want that. Like, that's pretty lame. My time is, you know, instead of doing that for four hours, I can make a new website for four hours for a client and charge them $2,000 or at the very minimal $1,000 for that website. So like, what is my time worth? And that is the big thing. The reserve list is great because it continues to go up and up and up. And sometimes it goes down and down and down, but then it goes up and up and up. You don't need to commit time to it. I'm not constantly flipping. And that was the main concern about my retail place was you constantly have to flip. Even though Dragon Maze is one of the worst sets, Pharos uh, was one of the worst sets, you still got, if you cannot flip your current sets before rotation, they're dead. I don't care how much the expected value of a box is or how much the sealed box is worth as an investment. It does not matter. You cannot flip it. The liquidity of that box is much less than when it's in standard. So let's take, for example, um, what box is rotating out? Oh, the Ravnica's, yeah. How long will the Ravnica's sit on a shelf if you haven't sold them by now and they rotate it out. When a Zendikar rotates in, then the Ravnikars rotate out. Let, let me just explain this to you. You have a scenario where the car, the point of the store, it's better, okay, so let's say we have a product, it's product A, and we can buy the product for $80 and sell it for 100 and we can do this every four times a year, three times a year, four times a year. Well, yeah, that's great. We're making $80 on this product. I'm just buy a box, sell it for $100, buy, use that money to buy a box, sell it for $100, buy a box for $80, sell it for $100. But if the box does not sell, we're screwed because we need that cash flow to buy the new box to flip. So a store and a bigger collector does not think the same way a smaller collector would think, oh, I'm just going to put this in my closet and hope for the best. Fingers crossed. No, no, no. You got to flip things. Because you need the new cash to buy the new product so you can flip the new product for the newer product. And that's what I think a lot of people just don't understand at the volume they do. Now, the reserve list is the only thing that's kind of unique about it. So, like, for instance, if you have 100 boxes of um, Return to Ravnica, great set. Five Shocklands, Deathrite Shaman, um... Jace AOC, which was used to be a really great card. Vraska, Revelation, Abrupt Decay. Great, great set. Very powerful set. Yeah, you finally, after 10 years, did you make, like, a five years or seven years, whenever last time we went back, did you actually make a tiny bit of money? Congrats. You finally can flip it for what you bought it for. After, eBay, after fees, scams, mail fraud, and so on. That sucks, dude. <laughs> Storage space, air conditioning. I would much, I'd much rather have a, a dual land. Well, it's 100 bucks back then. Savannah? Yeah, I'd much rather take a Savannah for 100 bucks. There's also cost of opportunity, which a lot of people mistake. Cost of opportunity means maybe, 
maybe we shouldn't have bought Magic Boxes. Maybe we should have bought Apple stock. Huh. Maybe. So the cost of opportunity is what you would do with the money if you didn't buy Magic Cards. Maybe you, you would just spend it on dinner or something. So again, hard to tell. But there are better investments than sealed boxes for sure. Weird. Bye, guys.